So we've done the formula journal entry. Now we want to talk about what's the difference and we want to compare two concepts, continuous compounding and general compounding because we want to be able to tell when we're looking at a scenario which formula we need to use. So to do that we have to understand the difference between the two types of compounding. So I will put general on the left and continuous on the right and I'm just making a little t-chart and the first thing I want to do is think about what I know about general compounding and here we start with a big chunk at the start and then we add interest to balance and then we have end compoundings and what else do we know about general compounding? We get a bigger chunk at the end. Okay, so then that's everything I can think of for general compounding. So then what I want to do is think about continuous compounding and see if it holds, if it has the same things happening for all this, the pieces of general compounding. So we start with a big chunk. That's the same for continuous. We add interest to the balance and add interest to the balance. I think this should also say after each compounding. And that's the same is true for continuous. And then there are n compoundings for general. Now this is every instant. for continuous and then you get a bigger chunk at the end and that's also true for continuous. So it looks like I found one major difference. Um, general compounding you get some money, continuous you get a little bit more money. That's another difference but it's not the major difference so it would be like our secondary difference. So if we're going to write this we could say, see if I slide this up just a hair, we would say with general with general compounding you maybe we should say you compound your interest in times while with continuous you compound the interest at every instant. Okay, that's one major, major difference between the two and it's in how the interest is being compounded. And then a second minor, well, I mean it's minor but it's not the crux of the matter I guess is what I'm trying to say, but general compounding yields less interest than continuous compounding. Okay, so that's the two differences. Now I am going to start asking you to do more of this comparison on your own so that you can start to get accustomed to it because you will need to do some find the difference between two concepts for your next exam. So I do want you to start getting more practice with that instead of just watching me do it. So I'll have you do more of this.